The Armored Pause Drop update for Minecraft Java and Bedrock Edition is now released, and with it comes more than just bug fixes. We have a new mob, and improvement to an already existing mob. Java 1.20.5 and Bedrock 1.20.80 is quite the big update for a DOT release. And in this video, I will give you an in-depth showcase of all the new gameplay features that have been added. Starting off with the winner of last year's mob vote, the Armadillo. This is an Armadillo, and this is a little Armadillo. Armadillos are a passive mob that spawn in groups of 2-3 in savannas, savanna plateaus, and windswept savannas and in groups of 1-2 in Badlands, Eroded Badlands, and Wooden Badlands. Armadillos can become startled and hide in their shell when it is hurt or when confronted by undead mobs, players who are sprinting, players who are flying, players on the mount, or players in a vehicle. When an armadillo is rolled up, it does not walk, cannot eat, and is not tempted by food. Armadillos then scan for threats in the area, occasionally peeking out of its shell to see if the threat is still near. If there are no threats detected for 3 seconds or 60 ticks, it unrolls. The distance armadillos check for threats is the size of the hitbox inflated by 7 blocks on the X and Z axis and 2 blocks on the Y axis. It also instantly unrolls if it comes into contact with water or is attached to a lead. Armadillos do not roll up while fleeing, in water, in a vehicle, in the air, or when being led. While rolled up, Armadillos take a reduced amount of damage when hit. In other words, their shell shields them. Similar to how shulkers work. But not exactly like the shell of shulkers, since projectiles do not reflect off of an armadillo's shell, like how projectiles do on closed shulkers. Armadillos will absorb 100% of weak attacks in their rolled up state. Dillo ball anyone? Such an innocent creature can actually scare others. Both spiders and cave spiders will flee in fear when near an armadillo as long as the armadillo is not in its rolled up state, despite armadillos showing no aggression towards them. Armadillos do, however, eat the eyes of a spider. Spider eyes are the armadillo's favorite food and can be used to feed, breed, and tempt them, as well as speed up the growth of baby armadillos by 10% per each spider eye fed to them. Armadillos have 12 health points, which is 6 hearts of health. Upon death, armadillos will yield no item drops, just a little amount of experience if killed by a player or tamed wolf. But if you let the armadillos live, they will yield a new item, and there are two different ways to obtain that new item. Armadillo Skew is a new item that comes from the armadillo mob. Armadillos drop one armadillo skew every 5-10 to 10 minutes, which is the same rate at which chickens lay eggs. Or for a more efficient way of obtaining armadillo skews, brushing an armadillo with a brush is also an option. With an unenchanted brush, it is possible to get up to 4 armadillo scutes from brushing an armadillo. There is no cooldown to this method of obtaining armadillo scutes, but you will quickly notice that brushes take a good chunk of durability damage when brushing that tough shell. Which is why it is only possible to get up to 4 armadillo scutes per brush. Brushes are of course enchantable, and with the unbreaking enchantments, more armadillo scutes can be obtained with a singular brush tool. Although, the amount may vary. Repairing a brush is also possible with the Mending enchantment applied. This makes armadillo skew harvesting infinite with just one entirely enchanted brush. Dispensers containing a brush tool within can also brush an armadillo's shell for its skew when activated. After 6 armadillo skews have been gathered, it is over to the crafting table for you. Armadillo skews can be used in a total of one crafting recipe, that being the crafting ingredient for a new type of armor, in which you cannot equip but your pet wolf certainly can. Wolf armor is a piece of armor that only tamed wolves can wear. However, it is not possible to equip wolf armor on pups. I guess the gear is just too big for them. When a tamed wolf has wolf armor equipped, the wolf armor will absorb all damage that would have been done to that wolf, with some exceptions until its durability runs out. Those exceptions being drowning, freezing, suffocating, magic, thorns, the wither effect, guardian beams, Warden Sonic Boom, Entity Cramming, Outside the World Order, The Void, and the Slash Kill command. To remove wolf armor from a wolf, simply use shears. Equipping and unequipping wolf armor from a wolf can only be done by the owner of that wolf, which would be the player who used their bones to tame it. Other players or even dispensers cannot perform this action. If a wolf dies while equipped with wolf armor, the wolf armor is dropped. When wolf armor absorbs damage, the wolf wearing it will not emit a hurt noise. 
Instead, the wolf armor will emit a damage or crack noise. Each time wolf armor absorbs damage, it loses durability. Specifically, one point of durability is lost for each point of damage absorbed. If the damage of an attack exceeds the remaining durability, all damage is absorbed anyway. Wolf armor produces sound, particles, and becomes more visually damaged when reduced to 60, 44, and 20 durability points. Wolf armor has 64 durability points in total. Using an armadillo skew on a wolf wearing wolf armor heals 8 points of the wolf armor's durability. Depending on how damaged the wolf armor is, multiple armadillo skews may need to be used in order to fully heal it. Repairing wolf armor can also be done in an anvil, but expect to lose some XP levels when doing it this way. Using armadillo skew is the only method to mending wolf armor, since wolf armor is not enchantable. Combining two different wolf armor pieces into one also is a repairing method. Wolf armor can be dyed in similar fashion to leather armor by combining it with a color of dye through crafting. Mixing dyes is also possible, which allows for many different colors to be put on wolf armor at once. You will notice, however, that dyeing wolf armor will not change the color of the whole set. So in a way, the wolf armor looks trimmed rather than dyed. There is no way around this, so no matter what color you want your wolf armor, the default color will always be shown along with the dyed part. Dipping dyed wolf armor in a cauldron containing water removes any dye from it. Doing so will also remove a layer of water from the cauldron. It is nice to have another way to color code our pet wolves. Now that both the wolf's collar and armor can be customized, what more personalization could we need? Oh, different variants of wolves have been added too? Well, it does not get better than this. Let's move on to the new wolves that can be found across the overworld. Wolves now have nine color variants, each of which spawns in a different biome. Most variants spawn in packs, with some having larger or smaller packs. The first of the nine wolves is the Pale Wolf, which is the original wolf we all know and love, but with a new name. Pale Wolves will now spawn exclusively in the Taiga biome with a pack size of four. Next we have the new wolf variants. Chestnut wolves can be found in the old growth spruce taiga biome with a smaller pack size of 2 to 4. Black wolves can be found in the old growth pine taiga biome with a smaller pack size of 2 to 4. Ashen wolves can be found in the snowy taiga biome with a pack size of 4. With that, all the taiga biome variants have their own wolf type. Rusty wolves can be found in the sparse jungle, which is a new location for wolves to spawn, with a smaller pack size of 2 to 4. Spotted wolves can be found in the Savannah Plateau biome, with a larger pack size of 4 to 8, another biome where wolves did not spawn previously. Striped wolves can be found in the Wooden Badlands biome, with a larger pack size of 4 to 8, again, a biome where wolves did not spawn previously. Woods wolves can be found in the Forest biome, with a pack size of 4. Since the Forest biome is one of the more common overworld biomes, this makes the Woods wolf the more common wolf variant as well. And as for the rarest wolf variant, that would be the Snowy Wolf, which can be found in the Grove biome wandering alone with a pack size of 1. Despite the name and habitat, Snowy Wolves are not immune to freezing damage in Powder Snow. In fact, none of the wolf variants behave differently from each other. All nine of them are identical to the default wolf's behavior. Their habitats are unique, and they are just reskinned. That is the only difference. The outcome from breeding wolves depends on the color of the parents, not the biome that the pup is born in. If the parents are two different colors, the little guy has a 50% chance to be the color of one of the parents or the other. There may be multiple wolf types now, but they all still count as the same mob. The wolf spawn egg is capable of spawning all the wolf variants. The wolf variant that the wolf spawn egg will spawn when used depends on what biome it is used in. Same for using commands to summon a wolf. If a wolf is to be manually summoned in the biome where wolves would not spawn, the wolf will be the pale variant, with the exception of the other jungle, savanna, and badlands biomes, where wolves cannot be found. Wild wolves can wander wherever they would like, so they can often cross the border of biomes, which would then lead to them being found in the badlands biome rather than the wooden badlands biome they spawned in, for example. Also, when a wolf pack spawns near a biome border, Individual wolves of the pack might take on a different appearance, if their spawn location is in a bordering biome. Let's now talk about some other changes that were made to wolves. 
the health and damage of Tamed Wolves has gotten an update. Tamed Wolves now have 40 health points, which is 20 hearts of health, instead of 20 health points, which was 10 hearts of health. Tamed Wolves no longer take half of the damage from most environmental sources like they used to do. Feeding a Tamed Wolf now heals twice as many health points. In most cases, this change will make no difference given the health boost, but now Tamed Wolves can withstand more damage from players and arrows. I should also mention that these changes do not apply for Wild Wolves. The spawning conditions for wolves have been adjusted, allowing them to now spawn on Corister and Podzol blocks. The texture of the Tamed Wolves color layer has been adjusted to be more consistent with the new wolf armor. The Armored Paws drop update also adds four new advancements, and as expected, they are all related to everything we just discussed. Isn't it skewed? for brushing Armadillo skewed off an Armadillo with a brush tool? Sheer Brilliance, for using shears to remove the wolf armor from a tamed wolf. Good as new, for repairing wolf armor. And finally, the whole pack, for taming one of each wolf variant. That last advancement is a challenge advancement, which awards 50 experience when completed. The parrots and the bats advancement can now be completed by breeding armadillos. And the 2x2 two two challenge advancement now requires breeding armadillos to be completed. And with that, I would like to thank you all for watching until the very end. Everything I mentioned may be different across the Bedrock version of Minecraft, since this video was recorded on Minecraft Java Edition, minor differences may be found on the Bedrock version. This update would not have been possible if Armadillo's lost the last mob vote. Luckily, me, and maybe you supported this mob. And look where that got us. We have Wolf Armor now, a feature requested for years! Anyway, be sure to like the video if you enjoyed my efforts, and subscribe to the channel for more of my videos to show up in your subscriptions feed. I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye!